great things that I, I can say about this man. Um, he's somebody that wants to, he shares his story and all the great things that he's doing. He not only does it here in Chicago, but he travels all around the United States helping to get our people, to elevating our people, moving our people into action to invest in ourselves and invest in each other. Um, when I think of justice, when I think of someone who is on the front lines and but you know, he's every room he steps into, hearts are touched, minds are changed, and uh, life is different. So I'm really honored to have him here today uh, to bless us with his voice and his story and his passion. And I'll leave the rest of you so you can follow us. So first and foremost, Celia. I just want to thank you for allowing me to be here with you guys and to be able to share space today. It's a real big thing, you know. Y'all time is important to me, you know, as well as it is to you. So when I step inside a room and I'm with humans, like souls, I try to make sure I be authentic as possible. Ain't no fluff. I ain't have to sit down and try to rehearse nothing and get nothing ready for what I need to say today. The creator always touch me and give me exactly what I need, like you've been doing for my whole life right Right? So thank you all for allowing me to share this space with you. Because ain't nobody getting up just leaving out their house for nothing. You know, we here for a reason. We're going through some things and probably this location <laughs> for most people probably was the last resort. Probably was the last option that we had a lot of times and stuff, right? So when she reached out to me and was like, hey yo D, Benny Lee ain't coming through today, right? You think you can make it in, bro? No problem. What time? You need me there. What time do you need me there? I know this sidewalk right here. I know these bricks right here. I live right around the corner. In the 90s, 8851 South Blue Skidding, right across the street from Bowman High School, right across the street from the swimming pool. I've been on commercial. I know what it is around here. I'll be at Gomez's. I'll be at Kukulis, you know. I, I, I know all this right here, you know. I, I'm getting steak, steak tortas, rice water. Come on, this is the hook right here, for sure, for sure, for sure. This is all some of us I have a chance to know a lot of times in life, right? What's my mission for being here today and what's my message? I just want to inspire y'all, like whoever you are, what you're going through in your life right now to let you know. I promise you that the creator ain't going to go just to drop you off here. I promise you that. And I'm speaking to adults right now, right? Y'all would see something with your eyes. So I don't come in here, you know, like I've achieved something in life that you haven't achieved. And oh, let me show you how to do this like I did this. No good. No good. <laughs> matter of fact, it don't matter where I get in life. One thing that my grandfather and grandmother taught me is to make sure that my feet remain on solid ground. You know, I don't want to float up so high in the sky that my people can't touch me or reach out to me. Because now I'm acting like I forgot where I came from. And I come from this right here. Man, let me tell y'all something, man. Yeah. And, and before I start talking right, when I speak to people in groups, whether I'm doing the gun violence, group facilitation, or I'm speaking on stage at the school, I always try to like share who I am. I think that goes a long way to you hearing everything else I got to say after that. Plus, I opens the door for people possibly to share information back with me. So I'm gonna give y'all my story first. Just give you a few inspiring words, and then I want to hear from y'all if that's okay. And everybody who got to speak, just to touch you to do that after you hear the story. That's cool. All right, now. So, uh, born and raised beside the shop. I spent time right here on 88th and was speaking in 95th and Jeffrey. I ain't sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. And uh, my childhood, man, it was so beautiful. What was that type of energy that bro just said right there? When we walked out the house in the 80s and the 90s, he was the guy that sold drugs. He's like, yo, you on your way to school, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to school. They're like, all right, now I don't know. Don't let us catch you out here playing around. Go to school. That's what the organizations was back in the day. You ain't gonna be out here playing, my boy. You gonna go to school, right? Because we ain't got nothing out here. We come from nothing. We come from nothing. Ain't nobody gave us nothing. The power was, hey, they ain't making no more land in the United States. All of it is already owned by somebody. So we gotta go out here and grind and get ours, despite all the weight that's been on our shoulders. I remember sitting in the house, maybe it was a Friday or Saturday, me and my cousin watching the cartoons. I'm watching the cartoons. 
remember cartoons used to come on on Saturday and play all day long. We used to get up in the morning like the school day to watch the cartoons. Right? And the breaking news came across. And the police was arresting somebody. And my cousin looking at the TV, I was trying to make me a piece of a jelly sandwich. And I was trying to see if somebody got the fries out the crunch berries already. You know what I'm saying? Right? I'm like, hey, got the fries already. And my cousin was like, it looks like auntie on TV. And I looked at the TV. And you know how the police used to have somebody's arms in the back like that? How they held them. They had this woman like that, and it was my mama. Mm. And I got this chip for a So I can sit down, because every time I tell this story, I cry. I'm going to tell them how to do it this time. I'm like, that's my mama. So I ran to the back of the room. I'm like, grandma, mama, mama on TV. My grandma, she thinking I'm just. I'm a little shorty, you don't know no better. Your mom ain't got no TV deal, she ain't on no show. Your mom is not on TV. I'm like, yes, she is. You know what I'm saying? And my grandma would grab her robe like this. Walked in the front. And when I tell you that it looked like the air left her body, she sat down. I don't even think she checked for the chair. She failed that. You ever had something happen in your life? To where you didn't know the magnitude of it, but you was like, I don't think I'm gonna ever forget today. Whatever this is right now, right now, I'm not gonna forget this. I'm gonna store this feeling in the back of my mind. My grandma was crying. My granddaddy came to the front. I don't see him doing nothing but take the engines out, cars out. I never seen my granddaddy cry. My granddaddy walked in front, he grabbed my grandma on the side. I said, man, something about to happen. I looked at my little sister, and then I thought about my father. Then I got mad. So I'm like, my daddy, I ain't playing so well. So well. And every time he rolled back on the block, he really think that's so <laughs> slick to come on the block and have whatever girl he pimped in or do whatever grown people stuff he was doing when I was a shorty. You pull up on the block and you just see me and be like, you good? And as a boy, I'm, I'm watching me and around me. I think I'm supposed to say yeah. But inside though, we're no good at all. Because that's a rough feeling going to school after your mama just got arrested and all the kids on the block know that too. So it's funny in class. And I heard that whisper. And you talking about a mild mannered young man converting them like the next person that says something out they mouth, I'm coming to see you. Then you're not gonna treat us like we committed the crime because my mama locked up. You're not gonna treat us like we throw away. And then I came back home. And every time something happened in the house, or somebody $5 came up missing, or somebody $10 was missing, it was either me or my sister. And it just got to a point, my sister looked at me, she younger, my sister way more OG than me. She's like, hey bro, I'm not taking no more assholes. No. She was like, ah, like that. My auntie tried to warn my sister. My sister jumped on the roof. And I came home, I'm like, auntie, what's going on? She's like, I'm gonna beat your sister ass. And my sister was like, oh, I appreciate that, right? I appreciate that. Uh, one thing uh, I do want to show y'all is that you're not gonna see me wipe. I'm gonna just put them in my pocket right here. I just think it's way more authentic that um, you see this. Because one of my things that I teach inside my group sessions with my men, is uh, manhood and what would men look like. Because even though they love me with all their heart, they kind of like shut them tears down because men don't cry. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. I remember being at my grandma's funeral 
after my mom got locked up. Me and my sister, we raised ourselves now. My grandma got two jobs. She worked at Michael Reese Hospital and she worked at Gladys' restaurant. My granddad is retired, so he cook all the day. So I'm just freestyling and living my life in and out the window. I can jump out the window and be back outside at 11 o'clock at night and stay out at 3 in the morning. I'm really, really raising myself and my sister watching me. And I remember my uncle, when my grandma passed, um, we went to Gatlin's. And I remember walking up to the casket and thinking to myself, like, who was going to look after me now? My mama locked up. My grandma in prison. My dad think it's more important to establish his pimping business. Who is going to take after us? And I remember looking at my grandma and I started crying. Just like I'm doing now. And my uncle walked in front of me and he was like, Okay, nobody see you right now. I don't want to wipe your eyes. And I was like, why I gotta wipe my ass? He was like, no, we got a lot of women in our family. And it's only a few men. So we need all of us. So you gotta wipe your tears. I'm ten. Like this really hurt no more. And so he made me stop crying. So I wiped him, I wiped him now. He made me stop crying. And I appreciate him for that. Because he gave me what he could give me. Because he didn't want me to get picked on when I went outside with somebody. You crying, now you a punk in your neighborhood. And so he taught me how to be a man outside. I just really wish he had the skills to teach me how to be a man inside. Did somebody hear that? Mm -hmm. Because now when I went outside, I didn't know what to do with the thing that caused the tears. That's the pain. So I put that on the op. <laughs> and I enjoy being a sent off man. Because it felt like it was a family around me when they be like, boy, I ain't gonna need still on you. Why how little homie do it? What's up? I'm hurt like a motherfucker. I'm, but I'm ready to give you some of this pain I got. I ain't know what to do with my pain. So when I graduated from high school, I went to the Marine Corps because I thought that was the answer. I had never owned a pair of Jordans in my life. I was like, Grandma, um, I want to know if I can get these Jordans, these new 1990 Jordans. And my grandma was like, the same thing your grandma was like, the same thing your mama was like. Boy, <laughs> ain't nobody got no Jordan money. If I buy you some Jordans, I got to buy everybody some Jordans. So I was like, oh, man, that sound right. But, oh, man, I got to go out here and get it. This is the thought process I came up with in my head. I tried out for the Cincinnati Whip. I tried out for the Cincinnati Reds in high school. I got a letter from them. In high school, I thought I was strong. I ain't smoking no weed. I ain't drinking nothing, boy. I was all day just practicing on the wall, just throwing fastballs. Practicing my absence. And I tried out for the Cincinnati Reds. Me and my boy Clifford Floyd, he actually ended up making it. And going to the Montreal Expos and then later on play for the Cubs. So he played high, baseball in high school. And I did make it. And I was so crushed that I didn't even call my grandma back for a ride. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. Because to me, that's how I was going to bring my mother home from prison. I was like, I can get this contract. And then my mama can come home and I ain't do it. And I was like, I failed. I really felt like I failed. I walked from 83rd and Sydney on High School, because that's what the trial was, back to 95th and Jeffrey. And yeah, no mama called. No daddy. My grandmama came back. She was like, why you ain't calling me? I don't know. She was like, baby, pride is the emptiness of abomination. You know how many men fail because of pride? Hmm. You know how many men fail because they thought that a man only eat what he killed? Hmm. Like she, like you got to understand that your dream is connected to somebody else's dream. 
Ain't nobody meant to do this on their own. That's right, nobody. So I'm just looking at y'all right now. I just want to inspire you right now that you're where you're supposed to be. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate your attention that you're putting on me. You're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And this ain't no hand up. This is a hand up. We ain't never had nothing before. We ain't never had nothing before, fam. We got to grind from the bottom just to make it to the bottom. Hmm. So when one of us is reaching out for each other, you got to take that. You know what my greatest downfall was in life? I'm the nicest guy in the world. I give everything I got. I give everything I got, Lord. I got $100 in my pocket, both of my sisters call. We all got $3 apiece now. That's what it is. You know what my problem was, though? Going back to my sister and you're like, you might as well buy me $3 today because I'm hot. I had way too much pride. Pride is the emptiness of abomination. And plus, it tells me that you think that you really can do this on your own. And that's too much strain to put on one human soul. Sometimes I go back to Black Panther and Wakanda because my favorite part of the movie was when Black Panther, because he got all the powers in the world. I hate to break it down to a cinema movie, but I felt this right. Y'all felt this. He had all the powers in the world. But they was like, what are we going to do? He was like, I got to go back and talk to my daddy. I don't know what to do. So he had to go back to the ancestors. He was like, Tell me what to do. Is this my uncle? Is this my uncle? I don't know what to do. So sometimes you can be the strongest man in the world. But the move may be to be silent. The move may be to pause. I don't think a man is respected because he got the power and he flex it. I think a man is respected when he got power and he just remain. And he's like, oh my goodness. This man could have knocked me off the map. Let me get my stuff together. I think the best days, not just when my mama beat my ass for doing something wrong, but when she came in and was like, I'm just disappointed. You like, man, man. I done left my mama down, man. I got to fix this right here, right? It's lessons in that. So when you're getting up and you're leaving your house and you're looking at your church and you're coming up here, I want you to feel proud of yourself. Man, you better be damn proud of yourself because your family is dependent on you to go out here and make something happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it just like that again. Make something happen. Just like that. Just like that. If not you, then who? Mm -hmm. if, if, if not now, then when? If not here, then where? It's not because of the fact that people told you you couldn't have it, then why? Hmm. And I promise you, the, mount, the lion going up the side of the mountain is always more thirstier than the one that's sitting at the top. Hmm. It's slob hanging from my mouth walking up to the top of the mountain right there because I got to feed my family. The one at the top of the mountain chilling, but we coming. We coming. Right. Listen to me, family. This is a community inside here. This is a community inside here. Black, Latino, and what else inside this bad boy? It's a community inside here. Right. It's a heartbeat inside here. Listen to me, family. Which one make more sense? They did a study, you know, and it just happened to be African American students in the class, and then it was Asian students. Uh, they was in the class as well. The teacher was black. You know, just looking at the test scores they get, right? Just stay with me for a second, right? This ain't a black or white thing. I'm trying to get you to see how we work together thing. And it was like, man, these Asians, they get great scores. And then the black students, Latino students, they, they okay? 70, 80, well, 90, 91, 92? And the teacher was like, why they ain't busting 99s and hundreds though? And so he asked the students, do you mind if I watch you to see how you study? It was like, oh. And so he just came out with a notepad and just studied. And his findings was so parallel with how we live in our life right now. See, when he went to the Asians group study, they was really in the group. 
was 10 of them and they'll read the same book. Mm. Matter of fact, each person just read one chapter and shared it with everybody else. Wait, you gotta read the whole book. I'm gonna tell you what it said. I believe in you, right? It was 10 chapters, it's 10 people. They was finished reading that book in 15 minutes. Mm. Meanwhile, I tough, big, bad, I do it by myself. You just that home reading. Chapter one. You got sleep. Let me get a drink. Five by five. You you did. You like, let me go get some coffee. You just fell asleep with chapter three open. It's not the work ethic that got you failing. You being out strategized. That's right. Talk about it. I swear. I swear. The work ethic is there. But the strategy and the approach, let me say something to you. Uh, I was watching uh, this comedian. Uh, y'all, some of y'all probably know Country Wayne. He was on that Shay Shay Club, Shay Shay. This is the rawest part I heard him say inside there, right? He, they say, what gets you up in the morning? What excites you? He was like, the fact that I was just looking at my numbers and I paid one of my men a million dollars last year. He paid his homie a million dollars last year, right? So he said, I'm trying to get you two million this year. Because if I get two, two million, I know what I'm looking like right here, right? He said, when I first started doing these videos, people was laughing at me. When you was going through what you were going through in your life, people was laughing. Mm -hmm. He was laughing. But he stayed consistent. That's the only difference between somebody who make it and somebody who don't. He stayed consistent, right? Right? Stay consistent, and he was able to put a video out every single day, right? And he, they said, and Shannon asked him, like, how did you come up with that? He said, in my mind, I learned it from the street. I took all my street skills and I applied it over here. Let me say something to you. Lift as much as you can with your head <coughs> so that you can lift as little as possible with your hands. Hmm. Say that one more time. <laughs> lift as much as you can with your thoughts. That's how you maneuver around the manure. It's pitfalls out here set up for you. But if you can think, it's harder to trap you. That's right. It's harder to trap you, right? It's harder to trap you. So now I'm thinking group economics, and I'm thinking, okay, my dream is connected to somebody else's dream, right? All right, I'm stuck. I'm in the work right now. How do I get up? I get up by increasing the skill set of all the people that surround me. Right. Oh my goodness, listen to me, man. I come from this street thing right here. I know when it, hey, it's a few more guys in here, probably some females that been in the house with your partner and you get a call when they say it's nation business. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we on that. You know what I'm saying? My wife, like, where, we, where you going? I'm like, I got to handle this bit. Y'all hear me? Oh, man. Let me tell you how your priority lets you go. Let you go. Self, well, creator, self family, community, financial awareness, and then political awareness. That's right. Now let me back up. God, myself, family, community, financial, and political awareness. If my family comes third, what do I look like jumping all the way to finances and not taking my family? Every one of us capable of making a million dollars. That's right. I'm trying to show you how to get a million to take your loved ones with you. Because it's lonely at the top now when you ain't got nobody to spend on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sacrifice it right now. I'm not going to sacrifice it right now. This stuff Celia talking about, this real life right here. A mother got two children, you got a job, you know, you may got to miss the job, but you got to do something with your baby. Go take care of that business. I'm with sis. Go take care of that business. You're doing exactly what we want you to do. And family, y'all know exactly what you're supposed to do inside this place. Exactly what you're supposed to do. There's resources in here. I want you to take advantage of them. Two, building up the morale inside yourself. I told you already, the creative and brand new spot just to drop you off here. And y'all leaders, right? That's right. All of them. We leaders, right? So a leader is, keep this definition, a man or a woman, a person who walks footsteps leaving them clearly cut for somebody else to follow behind them. That's a leader. So from now on, every step you take should be with purpose. 
And when I walk, I move around the room, I'm sure-footed. I ain't slipped. I'm certain of where I'm going. It looks like that, right? It looks like that. A man walks footsteps, leaving them clearly cut for another man to follow. Right. Check this out. If me and the queen, we go on tour. Y'all see that little cartoon? So they got that big river down there, and then they got that bridge right there, and then they got the little planks on there, and then the rope on the side, and some of the little planks missing. You like that look. Dangerous as hell, right? Find <laughs> my language in here, right? And me and sis come, and me and sis walk up to the bridge, and I'm like, that was scary as shit right there. Hey, sis, go, go, go ahead and cross. Let me see what to do. <laughs> she gonna look at me like she's looking at me right now. She just laughed at me. She's like, boy, I'm not going across that damn bridge like that. I'm gonna lose my life. But what if, and I'm not saying she's still gonna go, but what if I walk across first? And I turn around and be like, Queen, it's good. Come on. Now she still might not go. But she's gonna take her chances because the leader is the person who walks footsteps. Even clearly cut for another person to follow. That's right. That's what you're doing for your babies right now. Yeah, that's what you're doing for your babies right now. Stomp down. Stomp down. You're more important than anybody out here that's sitting on billions. You got a soul inside you. Man, the greatest heights in life have always been achieved by those who've been to the greatest depths. The greatest heights have always been achieved by that. Geniuses come out of these penitentiary systems. That's right. Because we know we didn't like to be without nothing. So when the pandemic hit, those that's been locked up before, we said, click, click, click. I felt this before. Oh, I did this in Manoa. This easy. I can still walk around the whole house if I want to. You know what I'm saying? We all good. You know what I'm saying? I'm straight. I don't feel like I'm locked up. I got a fridge ready. I can go to the, we did this in a five by eight, six by nine cell. That's right. Do you hear me? So if we could do it in that space, ah, oh, it hit to me, Allah, our Creator. I know why you put me in that space. You prepared me for this. That's right. And before that, I was working a job. It don't matter what company. Alcohol and substance abuse. We had contracts inside the county, right? The guys I was working with was inside the county. And I'm the main facilitator. And on graduation day, they stopped me at the gate at Cook County. It was like, you got a background? I was like, I do. Ooh, I do. Mm. <laughs> Forgot about that shit. Yeah, man. Oh, you can't come in, my boy. I can't come in. I just told my guys that it get better in life later. And I can't go to their graduation. Oh, no, this off. And then the pandemic hit. And they was like, D. Cook. They called it Daryl. Daryl Hood. <laughs> Mr. Cook. We're going to have to lay you off for a while. But we're going to call you back, though. Go ahead and get that six months of unemployment. I was like, all right, man. Went out there to Harvey, went to the unemployment office. One home to my wife, like, man. Hey, let me go. Hey, she ain't say it, but you remember in the hospital when Denzel Washington was with the baby and John Q, she was like, do something, John. <laughs> hey, that's the first time I felt. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time I felt. She's like, what you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, wait, I gotta make it happen to say this bad boy, right? And he came to me like a song I wrote. I was ill. Meditation. Uh, this is why I know this is true. When I talk to y'all about grounding yourself, you try this. If the next morning you get up and the sun ain't up, take your shoes off. If you can in the backyard, go put your feet in the dirt and stand there and, and let the sun raise up with you. I promise you, you're a part of the earth. It's called grounding. It's called grounding. You ever been in the house playing it with your cousins and you do this and you do this and it shock them? Because you got energy flowing for you. That's right. That energy is real. That's right. right. So we can change things with that, right? We can change things with our energy. All we got to do is make up our mind that that's what we want to do. And you can bring yourself out of this rut. If you I 
haven't got a bank account yet, I advise you to go do that. Come on, family. Hey, we can't continue to just keep taking our checks to the currency exchange. I'm going to hit you with a dummy fee. $25 for cash in your check up here since you ain't got no bank account. Get the bank account. All right? Get the bank account. And get your priority list together for you and your family. All right? Celia, I don't know how much time I got left right How much we got? About 10, 15, or what we at? Okay, about 10 minutes. All right, so real quick, let me just say this. I was playing big. I'm listening to the lyrics. I'm beating it. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the house like this. Uh, uh. And that man said, My mind's my nine, my pen's my Mac 10, my target, all you MCs who started rapping. I said, Pause. Run that back. That man said, My mind's my nine. I was like, Pause again. My nine is my nine. That's the piece I was missing. Because I was so crazy in the head. I was so crazy in the head when I got married. I thought I had the system together. And then I seen my ex-wife cheating on me. And I lost the job. I lost it. Out of all that good stuff I just said to y'all right now. I saw her with that man on 88 and stone. And up. And I feel so ashamed of that. I feel so ashamed of that because it revealed so much about me. How insecure and little I really was as a man inside. Because if I really knew I was that business, as soon as I saw it, would do it, I'm like, oh, that's what you want, Sean? Oh, you just missed the best thing in your life, son. Excuse me, let me step around you real quick. So I don't go where I need to go. You know what I'm saying? Y'all think it worth my time, but I didn't believe that in my heart. I felt real insecure. Matter of fact, I just, in my heart, moved for a fact that if she moving on with another man, he got to be a better version than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I got little one. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what can you do to feel big again? And then I up to nine. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful that I'm not a good aunt. Mm -hmm. Because if I was, I would have took my ex-wife's life and the guy that she was with. I'm thankful the Creator don't give you everything that you want in life. Mm. Sometimes He got to tell you no. You know what I'm saying? Because the things you don't want to hear, sometimes the things you need to be told. Uh, I remember getting inside the police car and a black, a black officer. That drove it home for me because if he'd been white, it would have hit like this. It was a black officer. He was like, Oh, you like to shoot black women? He's like, You're the reason I took this job. Boy, we can't mm. wait to get you. And I remember that feeling like, I want to say to him, like, Oh, no. I'm a good guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm off my square today, you know what I'm saying? I fell off, you know what I'm saying? And I went to the 111 police station. My sister, my dad, and my dad's mama showed up. My grandma, my dad said I had an oxygen tank. And she just asked me one question. And I'm going to close up in a second. She asked me one question. My grandma was with an oxygen tank, breathing through the oxygen. She had to get her air for the oxygen tank first. And she looked at me and she was like, who showed you how to act like that? Mm -hmm. Man, I had no answer for my brother. Mm -hmm. Man, I had no answer for my brother. Went to the county, found guilty. My ex wife and her boyfriend was at every court date in the first row. Mm -hmm. I, I got out. Never mind that. They found me guilty. <laughs> All right. And I got sentenced to 12 years at 85%. January 21st, 1999. And I crushed my family. I crushed my whole community. I was a shining star. I just tried out for the system that he read. I just got married. I'm in the United States Marine. I went to the Marines. I tell y'all that. I, 91 to 95, I went to the Marines. I came home. I'm in the United States Marine. Lifted lost it, man. And shot at my ex wife, man, because my little heart was just And I had to lay down in prison for 10 years. And that is the place. And I assassinated the little boy inside of me and grew up as a man. That is the place that got me. Well, it took me all that time. When I came home, the best thing I could ever do in my life. It was dark in my ex-wife's doorstep. I didn't know she was going to open the door or not. She did. And the most humblest way that I 
came and apologized to them. My son in this house, son. Poor old Bobby. I shot at his mom. My son came, came over a visit one time and asked me, could he stay with me? I'm like, dang, I just crushed my family. So when I had, came home in 2009, about the energy I have within the mob, eat my chest and everything, learning my lit, 101 keys, the same thing with this business right here, right? I started walking with an angry break on until somebody gave me a job. I got a job at LA Fitness. They were like, you can train? I was like, I got a lot one more time. Yes. <laughs> they was like, all right, man. These that you look like it. I was like, oh, I was hoping that'd get me in right there. All right, man, 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 man. They were like, we're going to need that paperwork for you. Damn. Call my uncle in Memphis. You still know how to put that paperwork together? They're like, yes. I'm like, send me some with a help train the paperwork. I took that up to LA Fitness Man and started grinding and working. I'm passing out membership, so I'm still trying to haul that female. I'm like, what up, show man? Membership. Three days. Three. Come out to the gym. This one sister was like, is that your gym? I was like, you trying to be funny, right? You know that's not my gym. She's like, you going real hard for it. She's like, what if you can go hard for your own business like that? She's like, I can show you how to do that. Hear me when I tell you I'm trying to holler at this lady and this lady trying to save my life. I was like, all right, what's up? She was like, come to my job and then I come to your job. I was like, where you work at? She was like, oh, I don't work nowhere. I train social workers at Government State University. I'm like, you train social workers? She was like, yeah. Come to my class. And I came to that lady's class. It was 19 women in there. One white guy, that one no more men. She like sit out like, oh my god, I ain't want this much attention right here. All 19 sets of eyes on me, right? And when the class is over, Dr. West was like, did you see why I brought you to the class today? I said, I think so. She's like, you need it, black man. Your voice needs it inside here. We ain't talked about nothing without you inside here, boy. She was like, so you with it? I think so. She's like, be here at open house Monday, boy, let's go. Man, boy. Cap again, I really thought they was gonna trick me. 
Y'all know I'm not lying. Y'all have seen on TV before. They had call a hundred of us down there talking about you won the lottery to lock everybody up on some ice type stuff. Y'all know I'm not lying, right? You know what I'm saying? Right? I'm like, man, they gonna get me inside this room talking about you driving away. I came right out. They were like, lock them up. So I felt that way. And when I was like, she's like, name. I was like, cook. And she couldn't find it at first. Here it is. I was like, you lying. <clears throat> she was like, nah, let's sit right here. She gave it to me. Man. I called my mom. I was like, mama, look. Oh, she came home from prison two years after me. <clears throat> and my mama served 32 years at the white prison. <clears throat> so you make home with yourself. My mama served 30, so the 10 years I served in prison was a sad my mother 32 years. Right? And my mama's worst day in prison, she told me, was the day I got locked up. And she said that was her worst nightmare. She said that didn't even used to like watching the movies at the white about something might happen to their children. You know what I'm saying? My aha moment in my life, and I'm gonna wrap up, okay? Real quick, my mama will roll a letter to the warden at Bernard Correctional Center. I've never had to go to the warden office since I've been there. I've been there five years now, right? Officer come to the gallery, cook! You got a visit. Okay, I got a visit. I told you, I was walking on the aisle. He's like, all right, you actually got to go up top. I'm like, well, he like, to the ward. I'm like, all right, you take me back to the sale. I'm straight. You trying to get me knocked off inside here. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, no, no. Go. I went, sat down. I ain't even know the ward. He was like, I've never seen you in my prison. He's like, that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying, right? He's like, you know a Doreen Cook? I'm like, yeah, that's my mom. Like y'all got correspondence. I'm like, we do. You know what I'm saying, right? And uh he said, I don't want you to read this letter that your mom wrote. And it took me to his office. This is my mama writing him a letter. My mama said, To whom it may concern, I would like to know if you could take the remaining seven years that my son got on this sentence and put it on mine so my son can go on. I was like, my mama will they give up a life. Oh, I was like, black boy, you out here playing. You out here playing. I said, oh, no. He said, you know, I can't do that, right? I said, I know. But I need to see that, though. It changed me as a man in that moment. I grew up, I put some chest on my hair. And I told him, I know you can't do it, but I promise you that this day will be the last day of my life that my mother and ever has to beg another man for my freedom. I swear. <laughs> so I came home and got on my, what they say, standing on business? Standing on business. The creator gave it to me. He took me back to that biggie line, eyes over nines. I'm like, that's the name of your gun violence prevention program. And it worked. Nines over nines. Now I do gun violence group facilitations all over the city. The thing that caused me pain is the thing that gives me passion. My test became my testimony. Somebody heard that? Yes. If you didn't go through this right now, you wouldn't have nothing to say to me tomorrow. You're going through this for a reason. And what I tell y'all earlier, the creator ain't bring you this fossil if you drop through off here, right? right? So listen, I can talk all day, and I would too because I love people, but I'm going to bring this in right now, family, because I think I've done my job. The creator is telling me so like you can pause. Thank you for your energy, bro. I just want to wrap up real time and just go back to our points. Number one, believe in yourself. You can Two, you got to discover your life plan. You got to discover that. That's why so many people mad at other people because they discovered their life plan and you still trying to figure yours out. If you had that discovered, you 
when you be able to pay attention to nobody else because you're walking in your path right now, right? And the third thing I need you to do is implement it, right? So the gleaming mountain of success that we see out here, everybody that you see that's successful, the gleaming mountain of success is really a pile of trash. The difference between unsuccessful living and successful living is not trouble-free living. Everybody get in trouble. Is that unsuccessful people lay underneath their pile of trash while successful people get out hard and they climb to the top of their and stand on top of it. I'm going to stand on top of my trash. Don't never let nobody bury you underneath your trash because they got trash too. And I promise you, you can't even have no back and you're going to make it. Okay, who's the left in the world? 